Marlowe Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today's DIY is one of those DIYs that has been highly requested by so many of you, and it's for larger wall decor pieces. And that's not something that I can say that I've brought a lot of to my channel. It's not something I do a lot of because honestly, I just don't have the space or room on my walls for a bigger piece. But let me tell you, I made room for today's DIY because I got a lot of inspiration for this DIY from my stovetop cover that I just recently did. I am loving that stovetop cover. I wanted a wall decor piece that was gonna tie into that that I could put into my kitchen, and that is what today's DIY is. And that piece really is where I got the inspiration for today's DIY. I can't wait to show you how easy this is and the outcome is amazing. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it and let's get to crafting. Before we get started with today's DIY, I just wanted to let you all know that Kayla, my daughter, is back posting here on YouTube. She will be posting a video once a week. If you have not checked out her channel, you need to head on over there after today's DIY. Link to her video is in the description box below. Alrighty, getting started with today's DIY, I will be using five of these Easter plaques that I had in my stash that I kind of overstocked up on at Easter time because I really like the size and the shape of them. They can really be utilized for a lot of DIYs. And so like I said, I'll be using five of them. This style plaque you can get just about any time at the Dollar Tree for any season, any holiday. You just gotta kind of keep your eye open for this style plaque. I'm gonna start off by removing all of the embellishments off the plaques themselves. I'm gonna take one of the five plaques and I've measured it to the length of 12 inches long. Using a safety razor and a ruler, I'm gonna score this plaque several times to cut through it. And you can do that easily with a razor and a ruler using the ruler as a guide to get a nice straight line. It really doesn't take long to cut through these. They're pretty easy to do. Once you've cut through it, if you've got kind of an uneven edge, it's okay, just go ahead and score through to clean that edge up, then take some sandpaper and just smooth out the edge a bit. So you should be left with a piece of the plaque that looks like this. With the remaining four plaques, I'm gonna glue two sets of two together using some of Dollar Tree's Jumbo Popsicle Sticks and Aileen's Tacky Glue. You really can use the glue of your choice, E6000 wood glue. I do, however, suggest if you are going to use Aileen's glue that you use the one in the gold bottle versus the one in the clear bottle, which is a gel. That clear bottle gel glue is really great for paper crafting, but I haven't seen great results in using it in a project like this. So by placing some of the glue on the popsicle stick, you can place it on the seam where both the plaques meet together to adhere them together. I'm gonna do that with two plaques side by side, then I'm gonna take the remaining two plaques and kind of set it right at the bottom. You can see how I'm doing it here and I'm gonna attach these two plaques as well the same way. You may have to cut some of your popsicle sticks to make them work and make them fit, but these popsicle sticks are pretty easy to cut through using some old scissors or even some wire cutters. With this plaque here that we cut, this is gonna go right along the bottom of the four plaques that we just glued together. You can see here how I did that. Sorry I didn't get it on film, but you can see how I did it here. I also did take and place some painter's tape along the back side where the seams were just to kind of help hold it together and keep those seams nice and tight. Now taking some of this lightweight speckling, this is one of my favorite tools to use from the Dollar Tree. It's really great when working with these plaques because you can fill in the holes that 
the plaques come with that the twine hangers were once going through. And so I figured that I would do that in the holes and I would run some just along the seams to kind of make this a seamless piece. Now, if you're somebody who likes to work with plywood, you totally can do that. I'm just thinking outside the box, showing people how they can use these plaques from the Dollar Tree to make a sign like I'm making today. And you can very easily do that for a very budget-friendly price using these plaques from the Dollar Tree and just kind of gluing them together side by side. But like I said, if you want to go to your local hardware store and you want to use a piece of plywood because you like woodworking, you could totally do that too. Once I've filled in all the holes and all the seams with the spackling, before it dries, if you take a nice wet sponge, nothing that's dripping, and just kind of wipe over it, the excess spackling comes right up and it stays in the holes and in the creases that you applied it to. If you don't want to do it while it's wet, you can very easily do it once it's dry with either a wet sponge or a lightweight sandpaper. For this DIY, I will be incorporating two boxes of Dollar Tree's Tumbling Tower Blocks. I love working with these blocks. They're one of my favorite Dollar Tree items to DIY with. I'm going to use these blocks to frame out these plaques that I've glued together. If you haven't caught on already, this is going to be a sign. This is a larger scale wall decor sign. This is something that I really wanted to incorporate into my kitchen, like I said, and so this was the size I needed. This is a DIY where you can really alter it to make it whatever size you want. If you want it on a smaller scale, you can totally do that, but this is the scale I wanted it to be, and so that's what I'm doing. When I did the size, I really tried to make these plaques a size where when I was framing it out with these blocks, I wouldn't need to cut the blocks, but it was almost impossible to do. In the end, I do need to cut one block, which I was fine with. To cut these blocks, you can very easily cut them using one of Dollar Tree's flimsy saws. Now these saws aren't great for much, I'll be honest with you, but when cutting through these blocks, they work great. Now, to cut one block, it took me about five minutes, so I really didn't mind doing it for one block. If I had to cut multiple blocks, I don't know that I would use that saw. I'd probably use another method of cutting them. Once you cut through them, you're gonna wanna take some sandpaper and just kinda smooth out those edges just a bit. And like I said, it took a total of two boxes to frame out these plaques that I've glued together. Once everything is good and dry, I decided to go in with some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of cashew. Now these are the same colors that I used for my stove cover. And so like I said, because I was trying to go for two pieces that were tied in together, I'm gonna go with the same colors that I used for that. I'm gonna give these plaques and the blocks a good couple coats of this. It took, I think, two or three total coats to get the coverage that I was happy with. And if you know me, I am very impatient when it comes to my paint and my DIYs drying. And so I like to pop things in my oven, but because I couldn't do this, it's warm enough outside. So I went ahead and I took this piece outside and it took about 15 or 20 minutes for each coat to dry. Using some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of ink, I'm gonna use this to paint the blocks that I framed these plaques with. Now, when you're painting the frame, don't worry about perfection because in the end, I will be distressing this and using some sandpaper. So if it looks like the coverage isn't perfect, that's okay. I'm not going for full perfect coverage. I'm just going in to give this some accent, to give it some dimension, and because I want the frame itself to stand out just a bit. For the wording on this DIY, I will be again using stencils, one of my favorite alternatives to the Cricut. Now if you have a Cricut and you don't have stencils, you can very easily pull that out. You can use some vinyl to cut out your lettering, or you could even use a black cardstock. And if you use a black cardstock, you're just gonna use a spray adhesive to adhere it onto your sign, which is a great budget-friendly way of adding lettering to a sign or a DIY. 
Cardstock is a great alternative. The only downfall is that you're going to need a spray adhesive, but spray adhesive isn't all that expensive. Dollar Tree carries it. Some people say it's good, some people say it's bad. You can get it at just about any craft store, and if you go to Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby, you can use a 50% off coupon and you can get a nice size can of it. And so, like I said, I'm using stencils because I really like this font, and stencils are something that you can reuse over and over again. An easy way to apply paint to stencils is to use a painter's tape to keep your stencil in place and to use a sponge dabber. You don't want to use a lot of paint on your sponge dabber because if you use a lot of paint, you're going to get the bleedage, the drip marks that come out from under your stencil. And so to prevent that, if I guess that saying less is more kind of applies to using stencils. Once I've got my letters completely painted, because I can't pop this in the oven and I don't want to move it outside for it to dry, I'm going to use my heating tool to speed up, expedite the drying pro process of the paint for these letters. Once they're good and dry, you can go ahead and peel back your tape, remove your stencil, and in theory, you should be left with a nice, clean, crisp letter. I think that this letter came out pretty clean. There are a couple areas that need a bit of touching up, but I'm gonna touch on that later. But because we're distressing it, I'm not too worried about it. Not to be too confusing and do things out of order, let's rewind for a second. Let me give you a quick tip on how to ensure that your letters are all even and straight. If you just take a ruler and you place it on the top of your DIY like I'm doing here and you just make sure that the bottom of each letter is at the same measurement, you can very easily have a nice straight word. I personally just kind of eyeball the space in between each letter, especially when using a stencil, because it can be hard to tape out each individual letter before you paint it because there is the excess paper around each letter. And so once I do a letter, I'll take it off and then I'll just kind of eyeball where I want to tape the next letter and just kind of so on and so forth for the entirety of the word. Once I've got all my letters painted, I will go back in with my paintbrush and fill in the gaps that came with the stencil because I just want nice full whole letters. And you can see here that I am spelling out the word farmhouse, but I am excluding the letter O. And you guessed it, in place of the O, I will be using this windmill. I think that this was perfect. When I saw this at the Dollar Tree, I knew that this was something that had to be incorporated into a sign and it had to be used as the letter O. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna do farmhouse or if I was gonna do home sweet home. Any saying really will work using two of these. If you're doing home sweet home would be adorable. But because I'm doing farmhouse for my kitchen, this is what I'm using. You can see that I disassembled it, just leaving the windmill itself, and it will be placed right here in between the H and the U. And when I painted my letters, I did place this down to make sure that I had even spacing. And I'm happy, so I'm gonna set this aside for now, and I'm gonna distress this sign. I didn't put the windmill on now because I wanna be able to distress in back of the windmill and so I'm just gonna wait until the end to put it on to distress this without putting layers and layers of paint onto this sign if you just take whatever colors it is that you want to appear are coming through your base coat and just strategically or randomly place kind of just bits of paint splotches of paint in no particular way throughout your sign I know it may look kind of funky right now, but I promise you that once we're done sanding it, it's gonna look amazing, it's gonna save you paint, it's gonna save you time, and yeah, it's one of my favorite ways to distress a DIY so it looks like the paint is coming through the base coat. When distressing this, I did want to kind of touch on it a little bit. I wanted to add some lines that went straight up and down to kind of give the illusion of wood panels. And so once I sand this, it's gonna look like there were panels that were glued together side by side. To sand this and distress it, I will be using kind of 
a rougher grade sandpaper because there is a lot of black to sand through and the letters are solid I don't want to be sanding for days and so I am using a rougher grade sandpaper and you can see that I'm just lightly gonna go over it distress everything kind of take some of that starkness and sharpness away the areas that I did add the black paint I really kind of want to sand those down to almost nothing. I want to make sure that the edges of those spots just blend in with my base coat and you can very easily do that with sandpaper. I'm using gloves because I just did my nails and I really just did not want them to get ruined when I sanded this. So yeah, I'm not real sure how I did this, but I completely forgot to incorporate the hazelnut into distressing this piece. This was another color that I added to my stovetop cover, and so I went ahead and added some hazelnut to this as well. I am loving the way this turned out. I am done sanding and distressing it, and it looks so much like my stove cover. I'm so happy that these two pieces came together the way they did. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and add the windmill, to the plaque for the letter O and I'm going to do that putting a fair amount of hot glue. Once I place it, I am going to go back in and reinforce this just a bit by putting a bit of hot glue on some of the edges of the windmill just to keep it from wobbling and moving around. And oh my word, would you look at that? I love it! The letters are proportionate with the windmill and I am just loving the way this turns out. I can't wait to hang it up. Now to cover up this mess on the back, cause this is a hot mess, I will be using some of Dollar Tree's craft paper and I'm just gonna apply it to the back using some of Aileen's glue just by outlining the back of the plaques, putting some glue on those popsicle sticks and just laying the craft paper down. And the great thing about this craft paper is it comes in a roll, you get a lot for a dollar so you can really use it for multiple DIYs when you're doing DIYs using these plaques and you want to use the back side of the plaques but then you want to cover up the front side that just looks like a hot mess like it does on this one you do that it finishes it off and nobody is none the wiser that you actually made this because it looks like a finished store-bought DIY to hang this piece up I will be using two of these sawtooth hangers you can get these in a five pack or even a 10 pack at Walmart for just a couple of dollars. I've seen like the picture hanging kits at the Dollar Tree and they come with a couple of these too. And I just hammered them right on into the top edge so it would go through the plaque into the wood blocks. And as usual, I'm gonna finish this piece off with my handmade with love stamp that I just love because when I make pieces like this that I'm gonna keep, I want my kids to be able to look on the back and actually see that it was a piece I did and see when I did it. And there you have it, a larger farmhouse wall decor piece by request of so many of you subscribers. And I gotta tell you, I am so glad that so many of you asked for this and requested it because this is a piece that I absolutely love. I love the fact that it ties into my kitchen with the stove top cover and I couldn't be happier with the outcome of this DIY. I feel like it's a very budget friendly one and to buy a piece like this in a store like Kirkland's or Hobby Lobby, you're gonna pay a lot more than what I paid to make this. And if I'm being honest, even including the stencil, I think I might have paid maybe a total of $15. But those stencils are pieces that I had in my stash that I can reuse, so I really don't add that to the cost. I would say that this cost me really under $10 to do. And just a reminder, don't forget to head on over to Kayla's channel to see her new video that she's just uploaded. Like I said before, she's got great new content that she's really excited to bring to you once a week. Link to her channel is in the description box below. How awesome is this sign? When I saw those little windmill wind chimes, I knew that that would be perfect for the O in Farmhouse. I thought it was the perfect piece to tie into this sign just to give it a bit of dimension so it just wasn't the painted words that were on this sign. I definitely wanted to use the wood blocks because I wanted it to look framed. I felt like by framing the outside of this sign that it was going to give it a more finished look 
And honestly, I couldn't be happier with the outcome of this. This is definitely one of those pieces that can be done to suit any decor style. You could do it in a glam, you can do it for a kid's room, you could put a name in it, you can put a favorite word if you wanted to. Whatever, get creative, make it your own. But this is definitely one of those signs that I think is easy to do, it's budget friendly, and you're gonna save a lot of money because a piece like this at Hobby Lobby is definitely gonna go for at least $50 after you use your coupon. I hope you all enjoyed today's farmhouse wall decor piece, a giant size one, using items that you can get from the Dollar Tree. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day, happy crafting on a budget, and bye for now everybody.